Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the invitation. And I'm very honored to share uh, in this panel the analysis of Venezuela. Uh, Susan wants us to answer the question where there is going to be a collapse in Venezuela and put a potential regime change. I think it is in the DNA of Venezuela for this to happen because Venezuela throughout history, we need to look at the history of the countries in order to know what can happen and what cannot happen. And the history of Venezuela has been one of flip-flopping between growth and development and political stability and poverty and chaos. And we are approaching the chaos phase of the cycle. And, this, and the origins of this, which are very old, because they started in 1498. If you see this timeline that uh, was distributed, you're going to see that this started with Christopher Columbus. So it's a very, very strong tradition. It's the way of doing business in Venezuela when it comes to politics and economics. So they, the probabilities that they will change are very, very very slim. Why? And why does this flip-flopping take place? Because every time the world economy takes a turn that demands from the Venezuelan elites to adjust politically and economically, instead of doing that, they, fight, they start a fight among themselves. And they start killing each other, and they confuse price competition with going after one after the other. And so they open the situation for chaos. And as we know in politics, uh, abhors chaos. And so somebody who's strong enough comes and puts order in the, in the fight. And this has been the tradition of Venezuela. With the Venezuela, and why is it? Because it is an extractive economy. And it was wonderfully put by Lombardi. Lombardi, the historian from um, the University of Florida, said that this tension arises from the fact that the, on, the, on the one side, Venezuela's elite presented a modernizing face to the rapidly expanding industrializing market economies of the North Atlantic that represented the only source of capital and price competitive consumer goods and the only market for Venezuela's agricultural, he's talking about the 18th century, 17th, 18th century, um, um, export, uh, um, agricultural export crops. On the other side, Venezuela's elite managed an internal agricultural production system inherited in all its major characteristics from the clearly no longer competitive Spanish imperial enterprise. So we have continuously used the Spanish extractive model designed by a monopolist that was mercantilist to deal with very complex economic problems. And we believe that somehow the providence is going to save us from this mistake. So we make it over and over again. And it was like I said last night. It would be like if you know the Angelinos decided to build it the highest tower in the world, the world, and they build it on the San Fernando fault line. And of course, it is going to fall with the next earthquake. And they insist on building it in the same place. So this is why we're seeing this in Venezuela. And this is the fourth time. When they, happen, when they, when they overfished the pearls, instead of deciding what was it that they needed to do to preserve this bounty, no, no, they fought them on themselves, and they opened the door for the control of a horrendous guy whose name was Lope de Vega, known as the, um, Lope de Aguirre, who was known as the, the, uh, the, uh, the tyrant, Aguirre the tyrant. He killed a thousand people in a country that was 15,000, the whole population. So then the quarrel, the quarrels among the elites on, during the cocoa, um, the, the cocoa era, that Venezuela was the major cocoa power. It surpassed Mexico, where cocoa is originally from. And what happened? They started fighting each other, and what? They had boys who managed to kill 14,000 people one night. So the learning cure is very important here. And then uh, they had, uh, in, during independ after independence, they had Zamora during the coffee, plant, the coffee boom. 
because the elites had started quarreling again. In 1999, 1998, they had Chavez, and Chavez was elected without any mayor. Having, having a stage a coup in 92, the, the, who was elected overwhelmingly. Because in these quarrels, not only the quarrels among the elites create tension in the political system, but they open the door for the discontent that all these extra, uh, extractionary economic machines create, and this difference between half and half nots, they open the doors for the half nots to, in a very unruly way, express the discontent. And this is what is, has happened and is continuing to happen. Now, today, the quarrel is among the Chavistas. Those are the ones that have the power. It doesn't matter. What, whatever happens in the opposition is completely irrelevant. All the means of power are held by the Chavistas. They hold, uh, they hold the money, they hold the arms, the, the weapons, and they hold everything. And they hold a very important trade, the drug traffic. So, uh, if this quarreling continues, I think that the despot this time is going to come from that side. Somebody in the military who sees his business affected by this chaos that is happening and people discontent and the potential of a big, big, big uh, violence spreading in Venezuela, would take over, and probabilities are very high that this gentleman or lady, because I don't know, I, I've been 22 years away from Venezuela. As a matter of fact, today is a very um, crucial date in my life because it's been very many years since I was arriving in Venezuela uh, at four o'clock in the morning on board the PVSA plane coming from Switzerland and to see the whole city devastated because of the coup attempt of President Chavez. And, uh, and uh, there I realized that it was going to be impossible for the Venezuelans to do away with this tradition because all the discussions that they have were of how much more power can I get from the, from the government in a state of thinking, how much power we have to give in order to put an end to this discontent and build a more flexible institutional apparatus and instill in this country a thing that not only Venezuela lacks, the whole of Latin America, because they are the children of Philip of Spain, Philip II, who was a completely mad man who only understood institutional framework in terms of jails or convents, and that's what he built in Latin America because in, in, in Europe he could not. So that's, and, and we don't have rule of law, and we don't give sufficient importance to that ingredient in development. So lacking rule of law and a flexible institutional framework, what we want to have is com completely Venezuela complete, continuing to flip-flop between chaos and, uh, and, 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 and um, chaos and stability and growth and decay. Finally, I would say that the only way we are not going to face this again is if we really sit and think of Venezuela, of how to get rid of three things that are the great obstacles to the creation of a viable institutional framework and the rule of law. One is this absolutely madness with Bolivar. Because Bolivar has prevented us from taking a modernizing view of the world. Because he himself had not decided anything. I mean, if you read some of his letters, he's a monarchist. If you read others, he's a Republican. One day he's a Democrat, the other he's a dictator. So the Venezuelans, the perfect myth is Bolivar because they don't have to choose. They don't have to take sides, they don't have to decide anything. You can do anything and be anything if you believe in Bolivar. That's one of the things. The other thing is, of course, this extractive apparatus inherited in the economic side that is uh, completely mercantilist and it is, a, it is created to extract rent, not to create value. And finally, and perhaps more important, we have to do away with the ownership of the natural resources by the state. 
because they ha if, if it is not in the hands of private initiative, you're going to have this mess. Uh, PDVSA was a Fortune 500. And it took this government to take it to the doldrums. So what is going to prevent that from happening again? If you have rule of law, institutional framework, and you just completely change the course, but I don't see it in the cards, in the lifties that come from Venezuela, I don't see this discussion even being taking place anywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh,